Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Turning Point, where I share with you my spiritual journey along with my life lessons that I've picked up along the way. I invite my friends, guests, mentors, coaches, persons who have expertise in various fields to discuss and dive into their own turning points in life, all in an effort and a hope that it will inspire and motivate you to one, further discover more about your true self and have your own turning point in life. Today's episode is expressing your true self through the power of publicity. And I've chosen this specific topic to build on the one that we had where we discussed community building. And I have a beautiful, jubilant, cheerful soul who is about to join me. Her name is Carla Williams Johnson. And she is an expert along the lines of public relations and community building. So I want to just give you a brief intro as to Carla and who she is and what she does. Carla Williams Johnson is a CEO of the Carly Communications, born out of Trinidad and Tobago. She helps Caribbean CEOs build global brands. Many of her clients have been featured in numerous local and international media including Forbes, Entrepreneur, Thrive Global, Authority Magazine, to name a few. Most recently, she has been featured in an international bestseller and has been listed as number 31 in TechRong's list of global PR companies for startups. She also has the privilege of being named one of the 99 limit-breaking female founders and has been awarded Best Promotions Company West Indies at the 2020 Media Innovator Awards. She's the CEO and founder of Cal Communications. And she's a wonderful and dear friend of mine. So I would like to welcome onto the program, Carla Williams Judson. I am Hi, blushing Carla. here, oh my God. <laughs> I am so excited. I am so <laughs> grateful to have you on. <laughs> oh my God, I just have to say though, you forgot one major accolade i have just been you know crowned that's for you to share so you share it <laughs> of the year, y'all. like yes. this is a big deal <laughs> 2022 <laughs> absolutely love it and you see guys you can see how cheerful and jubilant carla is she warms up and she lights up the room and I'm definitely inspired and excited to have a conversation with her. Now, I'll be honest with you all. I had no idea what publicity really was about. And I had no idea in terms of the spiritual background to it. Because in order to show up in the public, one has to be confident. One has to believe in oneself. And that definitely takes work to settle into yourself, to feel as though you are being your expanded and authentic self. It takes a lot of work in that respect. And Carla is definitely an expert as it pertains to showing up in the media, leveraging the public and media, public relations and publicity. And she helps her clients to do the same. What I have noticed is that a lot of her clients are pretty shy. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. And I found it so interesting, though, that when they do show up in the media, it doesn't limit them. They show up as their true authentic self. So I want to get into how all of those gears work as to how you allow persons to, you know, basically present their true self to the public. So I, I want to start the conversation along the lines of your personality. You're cheerful, you're jubilant, life of the party. Were you always comfortable being seen under the spotlight? Uh, that is a good question. You see, back in the day, they, call, they used to call me sunshine because I was always bright and cheery and I always tried to make people smile. Know that when I'm quiet, 
something is up. Mm. <laughs> Calm before the storm, as they say, right? Something is up. Society is not safe when Carla is quiet. <laughs> but I honestly don't see it as being in the spotlight per se. Mm -hmm. I just feel like everybody has a duty in the world mm. to leave the people that they meet feeling better, better yeah. after they've met them. Mm -hmm. You mustn't meet somebody and you're like, oh God, this person is an <laughs> energy trainer. Oh God, why this person don't go away? No. You must be able to inject that energy into people and send them off. I mean, even if you never see them again, they will always remember the experience they had with you. And it, it was a mm. good one. You made them feel good. So I don't mm -hmm. necessarily see it as a spotlight. It's just the way I like to live my life. Let me make other people's lives better. Just mm -hmm. me take me. I absolutely love that. <laughs> because as a life and spiritual coach myself, it's, you know, my primary duty to have, you know, that particular impact. And along the lines of impact, I know that, many persons simply just struggle doing the work to even you know believe that they can actually have that you know impact what were some of the limiting beliefs you had to overcome to allow yourself to show up fully in spaces i had quite a few i mean being let's just say it being black being female mm -hmm. being from a country that people you know say doesn't exist is not a real place it really does do a number on you mentally. And I mean, mm -hmm. for a long time, I've been told, you know, I literally was the wrong gender and the wrong color mm -hmm. for the profession that I'm in. So I had mm -hmm. to overcome those things because I actually believed that, right? I actually yeah. believed that I couldn't do it. I believed that I had to lighten my skin or speak mm -hmm. a certain way. Like I couldn't be myself if mm -hmm. I truly wanted to be successful. And mm -hmm. Also, coming from the Caribbean, we have our own way of doing things, right? Yeah. Women are supposed to be in the house. We're supposed to be taking care of the children. How dare you go out and, you know, yeah. own a business? Like, how <laughs> dare you? So there was a lot of cultural things. And I, I will even go so far as to say spirit, spiritual things that I had to deal with mm -hmm. to really say, you know, um, this I just have to do it. Now, yeah. I'm not over it yet. I'm still mm. a work in progress. You know, mm -hmm. there are some times where I'm like, can I really do this? Yeah. Is this safe? <laughs> Should I just go home and sleep? Like, it, I mean, <laughs> these things happen. I feel that yeah. way a lot of times. I mean, no one is perfect, but I really feel like I have come a long way. I have just decided, you know, I'm here. You just have mm. to deal with it. Yeah. I, I love that. You mentioned, you know, that decision to simply, one, just accept yourself as being present mm -hmm. and accept yourself, you know, wholly and completely in an unconditional loving way. And I find that to be a running thread that I share, you know, on the program. A lot of coaches, mentors, they all, you know, share from this particular point of view as it pertains to deconditioning themselves and yes. overcoming, you know, these limiting beliefs. They highlight this aspect of one, accepting oneself you know accepting you as you are you know how you show up in the world so i absolutely love that you know you highlighted that now for me it took me a while <laughs> it took me a while it took me a while to accept you know myself it took me a while i i would consider myself you know sometimes to be very shy the moments when i'd be you know exhibiting some level of you know extrovertism so to speak i would you know say it's like you know this kind of facade because i'll be like all right three two one scene action <laughs> <laughs> and you know for quite some time it didn't really feel as though it was my authentic self because i was you know dealing with trauma in mm. and using that as a you know a trauma response in that regard and it took me some time to connect with dust to even accept that version of myself so for persons who may find difficulty connecting to others especially in public what advice can you share from your personal journey you see the thing is you never fully get there i mean yeah. we're all work in progress you never fully accept 
and move on. I mean, there are times when I would tell you, like when the camera goes on, I instantly go into, hello, this is Carla. And that is not me, right? That's not me. But it is, you know, it's almost as if like a switch turns and you have to be somebody or you have to be something else. So it's never really a work in progress. I would say keep practicing, keep doing what you're doing Mm -hmm. and lean on the people who know you the most lean on your community lean Mm -hmm. on the people who are genuinely pushing you forward Mm -hmm. because they love you yeah they love you just as you are (laughs) they are sending people (laughs) clients um other connections to you just as you are and the more you have that support from people is the more you start to feel comfortable yeah. being yourself. I mean, being I would tell you something as simple as showing up with natural hair. That took a while. A while. Because, <laughs> you know, straight hair, we have to, you know, look a certain way. This was seen as like, like just not unheard of, completely yeah. unheard of, right? So even to do this took a while. It took a long while. And the world is changing. Mm-hmm. So I would say just it might sound cliche but just practice in front of the mirror in front of yeah. your friends and family the one that supports you just practice because it will become easier i also think that you should find opportunities to put yourself out there as much as possible and you yeah. can start small right start on a, a social media live start with um a little guest blogging on a website mm. where you don't really <laughs> I mean, you could repurpose some content or talk about what you know. It, it, it really helps with the building of the confidence. Because, yeah. And the last thing I would suggest is to be consistent with it. Whatever you decide to do, be consistent with it. Because consistency breeds confidence. The mm. more you do things, the more active you are, the more regular you are at it, the easier it will become over time. Yeah. And... I love the way that, you know, you highlighted, you know, practice, you know, to the viewer, it might sound odd, practice being yourself, but it's a healing journey one. It's a learning journey. Yep. And as you simply practice, you know, either your ideal self, the self that you want to expand into, you allow that aspect of yourself, you allow that aspect of your light, you allow that download to come in and actually integrate you meet that version of yourself by actually practicing, taking the steps to actually get there. So it might feel odd in the body. It might feel odd in the tongue. You're like, why am I talking like this? But <laughs> gradually, you know, truly practicing what I loved in terms of like how you highlighted it. One, having your friends and your family and persons that know you, you get that feedback to kind of bounce off, to kind of expand your own awareness into recognizing, you know, this, this, this is who I am. I mm-hmm. feel the most comfortable and I'm able to discover that through the actual contrast and, you know, taking risks, taking, you know, little challenges here and there, just as you said, you know, putting yourself out there and, you know, seeing how it feels, where it feels, you know, probably scary in the body in that, re- in that regard, you know, you get that kind of information. And I always tell my clients, you know, you use that information, the emotional intelligence to simply allow yourself to expand. So I love that you shared it in that way. So I spoke about fear because it's a huge, it's a huge thing. It's a huge it thing. Is. It really For is. For me, the fear of not being perfect was a huge one for me. <laughs> like my journey was dealing with a lot of perfectionism, you mm-hmm. know, that ideal and, you know, working so hard to get there and the fear of, you know, oh, my goodness, I may never, you know, meet that particular ideal. But more so importantly, what I recognized it was that fear of not only what I thought about myself, what people I would think, think of about you. me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how do you overcome fear and allow yourself to be present as your true self? There's a quote that I heard a few years ago. I'm trying to remember it word for word. So forgive me if I don't say it exact. But the quote goes along the lines of, when you care about yourself as Mm -hmm. much as you care about what other people think, then Mm -hmm. your life will change. So Mm -hmm. basically, we care and we put so much into what other people think, what they might say, what they might do. 
and we put so much into that that we don't think about ourselves <laughs> yeah. enough. But if yeah. we start to think about ourselves in that way, then things will start to move, things will start to shake, things will start to progress. And the thing is, fear is real. I don't care what anybody says, fear is real. <laughs> I have a genuine fear of success. I mean, I yeah. know I am fantastic. <laughs> and I know, I mean, people call me. I was having a conversation with somebody and they said, oh my God, Carla, you're so vain. I said, no, I'm not vain. I spew facts. I am fantastic, right? Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> can I do it? Will I be yeah. able to do it? Will I be able to keep up? Will it be too much? Like I have a genuine fear of success. So the fear is real. The feelings that you get are real. Yeah. But the only way to overcome fear is to go through it. Through it. You mm. need to get to the other side. Because mm-hmm. fear is a feeling. Yeah. It is a it's your brain telling you, hear what? We don't know what's going on there, so it's best the to unknown. Stay here, yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's just a feeling. Yeah. Because when you go through the other side and you look back, you say, oh, that wasn't so bad. Yeah. Like, you know, you, so sometimes when we go through things, we need a lot of hand holding. Yeah. You know. We need a lot of talking too because we're human and we're going yeah. through something that we don't Probably. know, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of us went through that during the pandemic. Like right? it was yeah. different. It was a different <laughs> experience. And that's why again I come back to community. Because mm. sometimes you need to lean on people who have been through yeah. what you are currently going through to get you to the other side to show you, yes, if what you're feeling is real, but it's just a feeling. You just yeah. need to get to the other side. And you'll see how easy it is, right? And there will always be things as we grow, Mm -hmm. right? Next level, next level. Like, as we grow, (laughs) there will always be something that we'll have to overcome. But we can't become as great as we need to if we allow that fear to control Control, what it is that we know we need to do. Right. And, 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 and that goes for every aspect of life. That doesn't just mean for business. That's in every single aspect of life. There will be things that you just will not have any clue how to do. Mm-hmm. You just have to do it and trust yourself that you know what it is that God has given yeah. you <laughs> the tools that you need so, yeah. and lean on the people that have been through it to guide you through. Lo- love that. Love that. <laughs> because... I discussed, you know, with another guest of mine, Amy Fazio, we spoke about, you know, separation mm-hmm. consciousness and, you know, connecting to unity consciousness. And we, you know, focused heavy on community in that discussion. So I love the fact that you're also diving into community. The reason being, you know, I believe, you know, through this human experience, we're here to actually have that social interaction mm-hmm. with one another we're here to experience our individualistic selves in that regard you know but you know integrate the ego in a way where okay i'm me i don't remember it all (laughs) you are you and you remember that let's vibe (laughs) let's exchange energy let's exchange you know some wisdom in that respect and now i look at community as you know other versions of myself as well you know other avatars in that respect you know persons who have a different vantage point in 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 that regard and it helps to speed the journey along again just by simply leaning into that so i love the fact that you know one you pointed out trusting yourself you know going within and i tell a lot of my clients fear for me is a great manifestation tool you're feeling afraid that means what you want it right day I just always say that. <laughs> You're feeling afraid. What you want is right there. Because yeah. when you push through that fear, it's like, but 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 I'm experiencing the very same thing I was thinking about, the very same thing I was wishing, the very same thing I was hoping for. But you know, that pushing through is simply just allowing it to enter into your reality. So I love that you know you shared it in that way. So we're diving in. Yes. yes. How did your life change or what turning point did you experience when you realized persons were now looking to you for leadership and inspiration? And how did you get into public relations to be known? Because she is known as the CEO's publicist, everyone. There's a reason <laughs> for that. <laughs> what prompted right. that turning point? So I got into public 
the weird thing about me, I'm weird. That's the first thing I should say. I'm a weird thing, right? But I have to be because, I mean, I'm in marketing. So I have always been in media. I have been in media my whole life. I have been getting people featured literally my whole life. I have just never called myself a publicist. It is the mm, weirdest, craziest yeah. thing, right? I naturally, when you're very good at something, you naturally think that other people are good at it too. And yeah. that's what that was what's going on with me. So people would call me, Carly, could you get me in the papers? Carly, can you get me on TV? Carly, could you call the media? And I would just do it. And, yeah. you know, because I was like, well, you know, maybe they don't have time to do it, but I would just do it. And, it, you know, and I just never called myself a publicist. It's amazing. Mm. And the turning point for me in terms of being a publicist was mm -hmm. when the pandemic hit mm -hmm. you know the whole world just yeah yeah that was it right Lockdown. i always say march 2020 <laughs> had like a thousand days it was the longest month of my life every time you, the month just would not finish right yeah and a lot of people was fearful they didn't know what to do clients were um you know, canceling contracts for obvious mm -hmm. reasons. And I was like, you know what? I need to be seen. Mm. And I'm good with the media. Mm -hmm. So I am going to tell people what they should be doing. Mm -hmm. This is mm -hmm. how you overcome this. This is a season, like all seasons yeah. in life. It will, we have to just get over it. And I went on and I spoke to entrepreneurs on how to maintain, you know, how to market themselves during this time. I talked mm -hmm. to entrepreneurs how to maintain productivity because I had a toddler and trust me, working from home with a toddler is stress, stress, <laughs> stress, right? Too much energy in the house is stress, right? I, I spoke to so many people. I got on so many platforms, local, regional, international, just sharing my knowledge. I was yeah. literally everywhere. I lost count at, I think it was 52 interviews within wow. of, like, two month period or three month period. I had stopped counting after a while, mm -hmm. but I was everywhere and people saw that. Yeah. And then they were like, how do you do it? I was like, oh, that's easy. You just, you know, send a pitch or you call. Like, what yeah. Is a pitch? What do you do? <laughs> and that's when I realized, oh, wow, I have a gift. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and people don't know what to do. Like people wanted it. I was like, oh, well, okay, no problem. I can get you featured. I can get you here. I can get you there. I could do these things and I could make this happen for you. And I did. Yeah. And business, a lot of businesses were saved because I helped them do what I did for me, which was to for maintain mm. visibility during mm -hmm. a very trying time. And mm -hmm. using what was happening in the world as a platform to help others. Yeah. And I did that for a lot of businesses. And then I said, you know what, Carla, you're a publicist. You yeah. help people get featured. You help people get published, basically. You yeah. help people put themselves out there. And that's when the CEO's publicist was really born. Because mm -hmm. it was, I could no longer deny. Yeah. <laughs> it was I in your case. I'm a publicist at this point. <laughs> I'm getting people featured. Right. And it really, as I said, really worked wonders for a lot of businesses because they realized that social media wasn't it. Yeah. Zucks wasn't it. You know, between, <laughs> you know, between the jokes, the memes, the videos, the conspiracy theories, the anti-vaxxers, yeah. the pro-vaxxers, the Trump administration that was going on at the time. Social media was actually, noisy. Yeah, it was noisy. Yeah. It was a noisy and it was a depressing space sometimes for people because yeah. you're, you're locked up at home. It was a depressing space and people yeah. realized that people were turning away from social media, at least from all the news and stuff like that. And they mm -hmm. were looking for something else. So if you could have shown up in a different way, in yeah. a different platform, but still connect with them, that was the thing that worked. So I would say when it comes to publicity, that was my turning point. I mean, I had a lot of different turning points in the business. Yeah. You know, how my, I mean, I have a whole story. The name of my business actually is an homage to my dad. He passed away a few years ago and he actually called me Kali. And that's mm. where Kali, that's Kali where the Kali, Kali communicated. Yeah. <laughs> and he was the first entrepreneur in our family. We have a, a business, we have a, a restaurant and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I have a lot of different, you know, Phoenix moves. Yeah. This moment in my life. But when it comes to being a publicist, I have to say 
it was COVID. And I love I love the fact that you again, you know, like many guests, you know, before you on the program, you pointed out it's catalyst upon catalyst, turning point upon turning point. And you know, sometimes you know, one can be like, whoosh, you get a big swing. Yeah. <laughs> you get a big turn. So you know, you remember those. But the expansion happens in, you know, microdoses. Sometimes it happens very, you know, explosively as well. You know, so I love the fact that, you know, you highlighted that and highlighted the way in terms of, you know, how we become aware of those varying turning points. And the way that you shared that story, I love the fact that, you know, how I received it, you just simply said, pandemic what? I'm going to yes. turn yes. Pandemic, <laughs> pandemic. into a new version of myself. And you went full on and something you said stood out to me. And it's something that, you know, I have been, you know, sharing with my clients as well from the, from the standpoint of this. How do you balance service to self and service to others? Service to self first is being honest about what it is that you need in the moment, what it is that you are desiring to manifest. And you dive into that and you explore and you lean on your gifts. You find those strengths in that respect. And, you know, from that place of honesty, when you connect to yourself in that, when you recognize one, this is where I feel the most joy, you know, mm -hmm. in terms of expressing myself, in terms of, you know, just simply being me, you then now are able to just take you as a whole platter, as a whole serving and say, hey, public, look, service. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, it benefits. So I absolutely, you know, love the way that, you know, you shared that in that respect. So a lot of persons may be looking for tidbits as well in terms of, you know, spiritual practices or any routine that you may do to remain grounded before presenting yourself publicly. And what does publicity and community mean to you? Because, you know, you mentioned those two things hand in hand. That is a hard question because <laughs> I think that is my entire platform right there. <laughs> because they both go together. Hand together. In hand. Yeah. And I think there is a genuine fear in showing up it doesn't yeah. matter how much times you do it it doesn't matter how many places you've been featured i mean i've literally been featured everywhere and i still get nervous mm. so you need community to help you move forward yeah. so there are a few things that i would do to help ground me mm -hmm. um outside of community and those things could look like journaling i love to journal mm. Mm -hmm. I love me some soca music. Listen, <laughs> listen, soca on full blast. blast. <laughs> Whenever I feel I am in a funk before yeah. I have to do an interview, social media on full blast. That helps me. Some people like to exercise. Some people like to power walk, whatever. But I love my soca music. So those are the kind of things that i would do to calm my spirit calm yeah. my soul keep me focused but i do need the power of human connection as well yeah. in order for me to move forward so sometimes i might be super nervous mm -hmm. about an interview or sometimes i may have to show up maybe have a meeting or something and i would call you i would yeah. call <laughs> someone else like what do you think of this because we are we're we all have our ideas, but it's always good when we have other people to, you know, help Both, us yeah. through. You know, sometimes it's just a vent because, you know, somebody upset you, like a client just annoyed you and you need to vent, right? Yeah. Um, entrepreneurship could be a very lonely road if it's not managed properly. It's not like in corporate where you go to work every day and, you know, you're seeing Merle in this cubicle here and Jason in that yeah. cubicle over there. And you're seeing them every day and every day you're going to lunch. It's, you know, they come like a part of your extended family. It's not like that. Yeah. Right? It could seem lonely. But once you have the power of community behind you, you know that these are people. Yes, you may not see them every day, but you could count on them. Count on, yeah. You know, you could lean on them. They could lean on you. Yeah. If ever it is that you, you, you feel nervous about showing up or you feel nervous about putting yourself out there or or you doubt yourself imposter syndrome that's a real thing like 
I always Listen. say, the more of a genius you are, the more you suffer from imposter syndrome. Them fly by night. Don't have imposter syndrome. Because they're just doing whatever they had to do. But from the time you are a genius, the more yeah. of a genius you are, the more imposter syndrome affects you. So congratulations if you suffer from it. It means that you're fantastic. Congratulations, right? But sometimes you need that push. Like I needed the push to be a publicist. I needed yeah. somebody to say, Carla, you're a publicist. You understand? Yeah, you're working with the media, but you get people featured. You're a publicist. That's like mind blown. That's what I have. Yeah. Yeah. So you do need people on your side. I don't understand why when we signed up for entrepreneurship, we thought that we needed to do everything on our own. We on still our own. need yeah. people. We yeah. need human, not just to buy our products or our services. But to make that connection to help us grow and move grow. forward. Yep. Yeah, understand? So, we need so that. Glad we need that. that. So, yeah. so glad you said so, that. So <laughs> glad you said that. It is what it is. No man is an island. You need yeah. people. You need the power of community if you are going to succeed. And the reason I'm, you know, really excited that you know you you mentioned just that in terms of you know having that connection to community to grow. I'm honest with my audience. During my journey prior, I was the island. <laughs> it had no boat, no plane, nothing available. I is the island, everything book. I honestly <laughs> thought, you know, I didn't need anyone. That was, you know, my, you know, my cap, my limiting belief. Again, one, it was based on, you know, trauma and fear. The fear of persons not showing up in the same way that I may show up the fear of persons disappointing. So I was like, why should I connect to persons? Why should I trust persons? Why should I open up myself to this, you know, experience and then, you know, go through these particular emotions? And what helped me was, you know, recognizing these are emotions, energy in motion. I would, just as you said, as you said, I would dance them out. I would, you know, allow it to that's, you know, just re relief from my body in that respect. But one thing stood out is that I had my own turning point in recognizing on my spiritual journey, mentors, coaches, persons like yourself, expertise in different fields, they had the link in terms of the energy connection to mm -hmm. help me to expand, to help me to grow, to help me to actually reach the goals that, you know, I sat and said, you know, this is what I want to do. And, you know, this is, you know, how this whole program turned, you know, turned around and, you know, became turning point in that, in that um, um, aspect is recognizing that mentors, coaches and consultants, expertise, all of these persons play a critical role in your journey, especially on your journey in terms of entrepreneurship, not just, you know, you know, your healing journey in that regard. Yeah. So I, I love that, you know, you said that. Yeah. So your work involves helping CEOs, yes. global CEOs. Yes, we are in the Caribbean, so right now it's a lot of Caribbean CEOs. But people global, I want you all to understand: wherever you are, you are connected to the Unity field, yes. <laughs> literally. Yes, <laughs> that's just the reality of it. <laughs> and you help many, you know, CEOs and entrepreneurs show up and become visible to attract more money while having even more impact. You pointed out why community is relevant and needed for, for entrepreneurs. What is one specific tip that you could give to say, okay, community is needed, you're an entrepreneur, this should be a first step? Hmm. At the end of the day, if nobody knows who you are, then you can't help anybody. Mm. If no one knows who you are, you can't make any impact impact as a matter of fact if nobody knows who you are they're gonna go to the person that will sell them anything because yeah. that's who is no that's who they know that's who they're yeah. seeing so you yeah. have to show up visibility is critical in business mm -hmm. and you cannot hide behind the computer or i like yeah. as i like to call hiding <laughs> in plain sight you, you also can't afford to blend in yeah. Blending in is suicide in business. You have to stand out. And the way to do that is through the use of the media. 
-hmm. Once the media says you need to listen to this person, mm -hmm. this person knows what they're saying. It just automatically puts you in a different light. Yeah. You are seen differently, even by the people who have been around you for years. And I have yeah. seen it. People have told me, you know, long I buy papers, but because you need papers, I went and buy. Oh, you're big in the dance now. I yeah. see you on TV. <laughs> like it just does something different, right? And it's critical that entrepreneurs understand that while social media is an important tool to use, I will never discount that. Mm -hmm. It is not the only and the main tool. It is yeah. a tactic to be used together in your strategy. And publicity is one of those tactics that must be in play. It is literally the cherry on top of the Sunday. It yeah. is the thing that would validate everything you've done. Mm -hmm. I can I can tell you when I tell people that I've been in Forbes, people literally wake up because Forbes is, as we all know, one of the top yeah. business publications out there. I've been in Forbes twice, twice, right? People have lived their whole life and has never been there. Then, yeah. It just <laughs> does something for you. So no matter where you are in business, Adding a layer of publicity will help. And I'm not just talking if you have an event mm -hmm. or you're, you're promoting a workshop or you're promoting a masterclass. No. Sharing your story. Right? Talking about things that matter. Matter, yeah. Talking about things that are happening in the news. I remember the second time I got in Forbes. It was around the time of the, 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 the infamous slap. Right, mm. it was Chris Rock and, and mm -hmm. Will Smith, and it was a drama, and everybody was talking about it. And I simply said, If I was Will Smith's publicist, this is what I would this do. This is what, so yeah, that was it, <laughs> right? So it's really using different things, whatever is happening, to talk about. So you don't always have to have that conversation where you're selling this all the time, all you don't the time, have to have yeah. this conversation, or you have this masterclass, or you have this event, just being visible makes people feel as if they know you even mm -hmm. before they even meet you and i've heard that a lot i just hosted and moses you know, know this yeah. we just hosted <laughs> probably connect event Dolly and that's connect. what everybody said it was like this is the first time i'm meeting you in person because this person. and it was like a revelation because they felt like they knew me because i was all over and yeah and then it's after they realized but oh, wait now this is the first time i'm meeting you in person <laughs> that is what publicity does guys that's what publicity does it makes people feel like they know you before they even meet you and once you have that connection making the sale is easier yeah. getting the recommendations is easier making those connections is easier it take all the hard work out of running your business and i love that you know you pointed out you know the aspect of being visible is you know how and why you will have that particular impact because a lot of persons you know going through a spiritual journey even if it's incorporated with business, a lot of times some persons, you know, may say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm doing the work and I want to help other persons. But how do you help other persons if, just as you said, nobody really knows who you are. Nobody really knows that you actually can help. Nobody even knows, you know, your experience. Nobody knows your story. Nobody knows these different tidbits that they can say, one, you are open to actually sharing your life you are sharing your turning points for me to draw from. If that, you know, energetic exchange and communication isn't being done, you know, how then are we, you know, having that particular impact in terms of, you know, trying to help and serve, you know, the larger community and collective in that regard. So I love the fact that, you know, you pointed it out in that way. Love, love, love it, love it. Guys, you are getting great tips. <laughs> like... On like boil corn, as I was say. On like what? On like boil corn. <laughs> so many clients go from being in the background mm -hmm. because I have seen it for myself. So I get to share this wonderful little tidbit <laughs> and little insight. So while I'm a life coach and spiritual coach, part of community and connecting for me is just simply recognizing authentic connections recognizing beautiful souls and i met you know carla through 
Jim Miller Bannister when she hosted the Brand Print Summit. I've, you know, I've spoken about that in you know, varying, varying Facebook posts, you know, how that was a turning point for me, especially with social media. And I connected with so many of the coaches and mentors that I've presented on this, you know, on this program here. And Carla was just jubilant. I was, it was like, fantastic. I was like, <laughs> Who is this, you know, fantastic ray of sunshine? <laughs> and it just so happened, you know, she reached out to me because I was also another fantastic ray of sunshine. You were, you were, you still are. <laughs> and we both, we both showed up in that space, you know, as our true selves. And, you know, we connected and, you know, she, she, she expressed, you know, hey, I want some help in this regard. And I was like, I'm down. I'm absolutely down. I'm down for the connection. I'm down for the experience. So I actually, you know, work with Carla as a personal assistant. So, you know, guys, I have like, you know, a nice little special relationship that I get to, you know, float. <laughs> and guys, I have a personal assistant. Could you imagine? Could you imagine? I swear. But I, sh I, share, I share this particular aspect of our relationship for a reason. Even though I have my journey in entrepreneurship, I recognize that it benefits me to simply connect and show up to help other persons in whatever way or form that they may need my expertise and my own experience. And it was simple. This is how you want me to support you? Yes, I can definitely do that because one of my joys is, you know, seeing other persons winning, seeing other persons, you know, moving forward and, you know, you know, getting getting their goals. So I was like, I'm down to support. So I share that to give you know that inspiration and more so to point out your the trajectory of your journey is never linear. <laughs> it can take different twists and turns mm -hmm. and it can show up in beautiful ways in terms of relationships. So you know be open you know for that. Be open for any experience. It might be simply being a millionaire and choosing to mop a floor. You never know. <laughs> you know, what you're going to get in terms of, you know, that particular experience, you know. So many clients I have seen go from the background to landing mm -hmm. magazine covers, interviews and articles like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, like, like clockwork. Why is it so important for those who are familiar with being in the background to step forward in their communities and businesses? It goes back to what I said. If people don't know who you are, then yeah. what is the purpose of all? This is just an expensive hobby. Like, why oh, yeah. are we even bothered? Right. <laughs> right? <laughs> we're putting in all this work, but we're on a treadmill. We're going nowhere, right? Mm -hmm. We're tired. We're frustrated. We're stressed mm -hmm. out. But we haven't done, we haven't made a move forward, right? And I realize that happens a lot with entrepreneurs. So someone says to them, oh, you need to open a Facebook page. Oh, you need to be on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, everybody on TikTok. So you need to be on TikTok. And that is literally the beginning and end of the conversation, right? Mm. There is no plan. There is no strategy. There is no nothing. So what people do, what entrepreneurs do, they hide in plain sight. So yeah. they will do the posts. If they do a video, you're lucky, right? But they yeah. will do the posts in order to stay active right yeah but sometimes well, at least as, as i have noticed is that people struggle with content because they always want to put out what they have for sale and maybe what they have for sale is not ready yet mm -hmm. or maybe what they have for sale is you know they're readjusting the price and that's a whole other story at price and there's a whole other story we never price our stuff properly but Mm. That's a whole other turning point. <laughs> People raise your prices. That's all I have to say. Just raise your prices. Whatever you think it is, just double it. Just raise it, right? But anyhow, but yeah, people, um, entrepreneurs are told that they need to do all of these things, but there is no plan. There's no strategy behind it. So what happens is that if they're doing all of this work and they're not getting the returns that they need on their yeah investment of time and energy because that's mm -hmm. what we have when we just start out right we have a lot of time we have a lot of energy we may not have a lot of money to invest in the beginning but we have a mm -hmm. lot of time and energy but you have to make it count where publicity comes in is that or, or getting you as a, as a, as you said from behind the scenes to in yeah. front is an a good investment of your time and energy because when people see you 
they know you exist yeah right then eventually they will know what you have to offer to offer Mm -hmm. right and i always tell people even if it is that you don't have anything going on right now an event or anything you can start by telling stories talk about your journey talk about how you came to be talk about the things that have kept you back the lessons you have learned yeah. right those are those are so inspirational and motivational to other entrepreneurs who are struggling right now yeah right you can be a thought leader if there's something going on that you just think it's just atrocious and you need to speak out about it talk about, about it, it. Yeah. be the voice of your people talk yeah. about things that are as i like to call them trending topics what's happening the more you are visible the more you come from behind the scenes to in front is the more people will know who you are people will be yeah. healing you out and you wouldn't even know who they are because <laughs> they've seen you and they've, you're their yeah. friend right and Getting out from behind the scenes and in front doesn't always have to look like getting all dolled up and getting all um getting all dolled up and putting on makeup and fixing yeah. your hair and all of these types of things. It doesn't have to look like that. And Moses, you have seen it. You've seen where people get magazine covers and all they did was answer in, a couple questions. Instant, or instant, had a phone instant call shift. with a with a journalist <laughs> and they get a two page spread. Yep. They didn't have to get all dolled up. They didn't have to, you know, there was no there was no need for lights, camera, action, or action. anything along those yeah. lines. So yeah. I want people to understand that showing up doesn't have to look like, mm -hmm. you know, having a camera stuck in your face or or, or, or having to... A glam production. You understand yeah. what I mean? It doesn't yeah. have to be that nerve-wracking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have to be that nerve-wracking to be impactful. Yeah. Right. You just simply have to decide that this is what you want and you find the right platform that suits you. I know I have people out here. They don't want to be seen at all. Radio interviews works well for them. Yeah. Their voice is good enough. Yeah. Right. And it works for them. They they build their, their repertoire. They build clients. They make their money that way. Mm -hmm. I know some people who only guest blog. They have yeah. a lot of co content that they repurpose or that they share their, their thoughts and opinions and they just get plugged and they get traction from that. So you don't always have to show up on camera if that yeah. if you're not comfortable with that just yet. Yeah, yeah. But you have to find a way to show up if you want to be seen. And yeah. that is the that is a necessary component to building a business, building a brand, and making money. Yeah. And it, it 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 ties in everything that we've discussed in terms of expressing your true self yeah. you know you 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 shared you may not be comfortable on the camera that's okay show up still express yourself where you have a gift where you are comfortable radio guest vlog you know so you're being you know very real about the advice that you know you're giving you know the audience and our uh listeners and viewers of the program so i absolutely love that but and you know the, the, the thing is though when you start where you're comfortable mm -hmm. it's very easy to get to that level where yeah. you're uncomfortable because again you'll be flexing your confidence muscles so Muscle, after you do yeah. of, and we've seen it we've seen it yeah. with our clients right they start <laughs> off with a guest blog and with a little interview and boom shot they're on tv just like that because they they're have actually, they're actually the calling to say already <laughs> yeah and they were like i would never i don't want to be on the I can handle that and within like a few short weeks because they have gotten you know the consistent consistency yeah. and the validation and all of those things like okay yeah already now put me on put me on tv already yeah we've seen it yeah. so again it goes back to what we talked about um when we first started Consistency, consistency you know yeah. put it can't being consistent with it it really does help get you to that place where you go through the fear and you come out on the other side and you realize hmm, it wasn't that bad it wasn't yeah it, <laughs> it wasn't, really wasn't yeah. that bad yeah and you know it's so interesting you know sometimes like you know when we speak to clients and you remind them you remember when you was afraid the yeah, watching, like, like, what are you talking about? I don't remember. Like, they were, I don't remember. What, I don't remember. <laughs> you know, because they've expanded, they've integrated the lesson, and you know, it becomes, you know, so familiar. The new reality is like, all right, this is my new reality now. Yeah. And 
a new challenge, new me. <laughs> <laughs> so I, 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 I love that. So for anyone listening who has an interest in leveraging the media and gaining more publicity, what does working with you entail and look like? I know they've gotten a little sneak peek through the conversation, but I want you to share what does working with you look like and entail and what shifts and realizations do you hope persons will experience from your expertise? I always tell my people, when you work with me, expect a lot of handholding. Yeah. Expect that you will get fed up of me because I will be <laughs> on you to make sure that you're okay. Because I know saying yeah. you want to show up and actually showing up is two different two things. Different things yeah. When the interview comes, <laughs> when the newspaper calls, when you are sitting in studio to go live, the butterflies, the self-doubt, you know, the yeah. chest wants, the, the heart wants to beat out your chest. I get it. I understand <laughs> it. I understand it. Just the other day, I had to, I have a client. She has two interviews very recently. And I had to prep her yeah. because, you know, she's nervous. Even though I have prepped her before. Yeah. For the <laughs> I had to prep her again because I get it. I totally get it. So when you work with me, I seek out the publications the media houses whatever that would be suitable for you based yeah. on your personality and the audience that you're trying to attract because i don't want to put you somewhere that you're not comfortable comfortable right mm -hmm. and then once i source those things for you i send out a picture on your behalf and once you secure the interview i prep you on what to do what to say what is the messaging how to stay on point this, whatever the interviewer asks, this is what we're coming back to. Talk mm -hmm. about your why. If you have, if you have an event that you want to plug, no problem. But the yeah. point is to talk about your why. The reason why I don't particularly love pushing events is because events date the interview. Because uh, once that event is okay. passed, using yeah. the interview, it'll be a little dated. So dated, yeah. unless you are doing a campaign specifically for the event, um, then yeah. But if you're doing a visibility campaign, as I like to call it, yeah sharing your story sharing your why right and i find the places to put you in and i tell you what to say after the interview is done follow up for the live links or yeah recordings or whatever that might look like and then i sit with you and i tell you what to do with it you have this fantastic piece of media real estate you have to be able to use it to build your visibility yeah. build your credibility build your income people sit and i've seen it because apparently yeah. i'm one of I, I think i'm the only publicist that tells people how to leverage i'm a mm. lot of people that i've spoken to that that deal with publicists say that they don't do that and i'm like mm -hmm. but how are you supposed to know what to do with what it? to you do with it just on this yeah. fantastic interview we've yeah. prepped for it you need to know how to use it and to use yeah. it effectively so that is something that I always do. I say, okay, this is how you're going to leverage it. We're going to do this, this, this. You're going to pull this piece. You're going to do a blog with it. Like I literally tell you what to do with it because that piece of media real estate is yours forever. Mm. And you could repurpose mm -hmm. it a million different ways, ways. Yeah. into your content. And I go through those million ways that you can <laughs> use your content and how to spread it out, structure it, plan it out, you know and it works yeah it works guys i'm not just saying that i mean Moses could testify we have some clients <laughs> who like repurposing content from however long from whatever how much of an interviews doing yep. reels doing posts doing blogs doing guest blogs and, 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 and talking about how they were featured in this media yeah like, and men and many have said you know i don't have content and then they're like, wait, I listened to what Carla said. Nah, man, I have a, I have a whole mansion. <laughs> I have a mansion. I have content, you know? Yeah. And I love, I love that, you know, you shared how involved, you know, you are. It's not just, you know, about putting persons in front of a camera, getting them on a publication. I've seen it. I've witnessed it. You know, it's an aspect of your own personality as well. You know, it's to me, it's your ethos. It's your mission. You know, you've done it for yourself and you understand why it was important for you. And you carry that importance 
in your business with your clientele to stress hey this is why it's also important for you <laughs> and you know you you are detailed you are you know you are loving in that particular approach as well so i i love that you know you've got to share that with the audience and i've seen it with my own two eyes literally when i wear glasses at times so for <laughs> It really is, it really is an amazing transformation when you see, I mean, I, Moses, you have been lucky enough to see, yeah, to see it. the transformation <laughs> that, you know, Carly Communications has made in the lives of entrepreneurs. Literally, yeah. they transform in front of our eyes. And all I say to them is say, like, when you're big and you're sitting down next to Oprah, <laughs> or your mama, just remember little old me. Just remember me. That's all I ask. You know, but I, we, it's amazing. It's amazing how publicity could really transform the lives of people and their businesses and their brand. It really is amazing. Love, love, love it, love it. So I want to quickly go to a segment that I go, I do with all the guests. It's called Play With Time. It's story time. So in this segment, I ask my guests to demonstrate dimension and timeline hopping, so to speak. It's to help viewers deepen their awareness to the present moment. It's a simple question. If you had a moment to share an element of your life as a story, to impart a lesson to your younger self, specifically as it relates to community, expressing your true self, showing up, what would it be? What would the story be? Yes, the lesson and the story and why. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Wait, okay, ask the question again. Let me think. <laughs> let me think, let me think, let me think. If you, had, if you had a moment to share an element of your life as a story to impart a lesson to your younger self, specifically as it relates to publicity, community building, entrepreneurship, showing up as your true self and expressing your true self, what would that be? story or lesson B and why this is an I, <laughs> I'm stumped people this does this, this does not happen to me I am stumped I so this is a, a, a story from my past yeah it could be a story from your past oh, life oh, I have so yeah. many though that's the thing <laughs> I have so many I have so many. I would say, I would say, wow, I would say so many stories. But with respect to showing up and community. Yeah, to your younger self. Yeah. And showing up as your true and authentic self. I have to go back to that time when I was featured in Huffington Post, the 99 mm -hmm. Limit Break in Female Founders. Mm -hmm. Because it was so early in the game. Mm -hmm. I thought nobody was watching me. Yeah. I thought nobody cared. I mm. thought nobody had me to study. And I was doing the work. It was yeah. like really early in the game. And they contacted me and asked me to be part of this online community, which became the 99 Limit Breaking Female for Congress. And why that is so important is because I kept showing up despite what people told me. That time, uh -huh. I was yeah. very young in business and people were telling me to stop, don't do it. You're, 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 you're not supposed to be here. This is a white man's industry. What are yeah, you doing? Trinidad is not a real place. Like I yeah. was hearing that so <laughs> loud, but I still went ahead anyway. I still showed up. I still did the work. I still made the connection. And they contacted me to be part of this community. And yeah. not only was I part of the 99 Limit Break and Female Founders, I was the only one from the Caribbean, mm. which says, a lot out of 99 yeah. very one of the very few black people the yeah. only one from the caribbean that made the list and i think that in itself in my opinion shows the power of showing up showing up it shows yeah. the power of ignoring what people say doing what you need to do 
being your authentic true self yeah right and people will recognize the greatness within you yeah and they will reward you for it yeah and i think that was for me the catalyst moment catalyst yeah head. So it took a while, but I, I was trying to think of something else, but I always my brain kept going back <laughs> to that. It just kept going back. That was that has to be it. Because it's it, it's one of those, you know, again, when we think about it, it's one of those, you know, turning points for you as well. So I'm you know really grateful and appreciative that you know you shared that. And what I took from it is that one, you trusted your authentic self, you trusted your gut, you trusted your instinct regardless of your own self-doubt and mm -hmm. regardless of the doubt in terms of the conditioning that you were, you know, receiving from around you. So for persons who are ready to experience the shift, the excitement, the sunshine, <laughs> the warmth, <laughs> where can persons interested in working with you find and reach out to you? Well, I am on social as with as everyone else, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn at Carly Communications, YouTube at Carly TV, Twitter and Clubhouse at Carly Com. That's C A R L I C O M M. Mm -hmm. Right. Or you can check me on my website at www.carlymedia.com. There are a lot of really great um, resources there. My blog. Um, um, I have a couple. Um, sorry, a downloadable. I have webinars, master classes that you can take advantage of. So I strongly recommend you go to my website and take advantage of, yeah. you know, learning the tools to be seen, right? And yeah. be seen regardless of where you are in the spectrum, from introvert to extrovert. Like, you can be seen. And I'm speaking, like, to the introverts out there. I know it could be very scary. Your energy... Yeah is linked to everything you do. So you don't want to be in a place where your energy is draining. You don't want to be in a place where, oh, you know, sometimes making that phone call is such an energy draining experience. But being an introvert doesn't mean that it isn't a way that you can show up. Yeah. There are there are ways that you can show up as an introvert and still make the impact and the income that you deserve. So head to my website. It's all there. So you directed, you know, that tidbit towards introverts. You said your website has webinars, your blogs. Is there any, you know, catalog there for introverts specifically? Oh, stop. Listen, okay. introverts are my peeps. <laughs> you all may not realize this. I mean, I don't come across as an introvert, but I identify as one because I understand people are frustrating. People, no serious people could drain your energy it, it it could be a lot and you know i don't like to go anywhere because yeah. then i have to you know i may meet somebody that just i don't want to have to deal with and then i have to sleep for the rest of the week so i understand yeah. i understand yeah. as an introvert as an extrovert yeah but as an introvert i understand you have to protect the energy so i yeah. actually do have something specifically for introverts to help them understand hey I might mm -hmm. be an introvert, but I don't have to be broke because of it, right? There are ways that I can still show up. Show There's still up, ways yeah. I can market myself as an introvert so I can make the impact and, as I said, the income that you know you deserve. You're not going to be spinning in circles. We're going to be strategic. I'm going to take yeah. the steps so we can help the people we need to help and make the money in the process. And, again, you wrapped it up by simply saying, Expressing yourself is a process of also accepting yourself. You <laughs> accept, you know, who you are, introvert, yeah. extrovert, whomever you may identify in, you know, that regard. You accept it and it doesn't exclude you from the process of impact showing up and, you know, simply being of service to others. While, again, in that balance, you are being of service to yourself. Hey, Sometimes, you know, that's what the journey is about in terms of business. You know, it's that energetic exchange. I give, I receive. Yep. And I absolutely love <laughs> everything that you've shared, the way that you've shared it. I love the, the time I've, I've gotten to spend with you. And I want to say specifically for this particular episode, I couldn't think of anyone for a while. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, guys, like I, I share, this program means a lot to me. So I take my time, I meditate, and I, I wait for the guides, I wait for the downloads. So sometimes it's not just, you know, me, you know, surveying the internet for guests or experts or persons within my own network. I, 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 I wait for the alignment in terms of the time as to when, you know, mm -hmm. the program is calling for that, you know, connection and that, you know, revelation and to allow those persons to come on and express their self, to express their gift, to express their light and, you know, their expertise to the world in that regard. So Carla, I am absolutely grateful. You know, I'm going to share the website one more time where persons can yes. find you. <laughs> She has a host of things there. Yes. So I now have this tradition where I say goodbye with the guests to the audience. So as the website is up, it's been turning point. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs>